program was recorded at ARC Advisory Group's annual World Industry Forum in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome Editor-in-Chief of Supply Chain Brain, Russell Goodman. Joining us for a conversation today on integrating business intelligence, planning, and execution in the retail CPG space is Mark Zelenak, Vice President, Consumer Products and Retail at One Network. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Russell. Mark, for any of our viewers that may not be entirely familiar with your company, what is One Network? What does it do? One Network provides supply chain applications in a SaaS model. So the services provide such as capabilities such as transportation, logistics, replenishment, demand planning, procurement, and customer insights as to what's selling at the uh, retail store. Now, we've talked about incremental and continuous planning and execution, but for the, for the viewers, explain what that means. What is it within the One Network context? Well, traditional planning systems are segmented from the execution systems. Every once in a while, they'll pull the information out of an execution system, put it into a planning system, run that plan for several hours, and then put that back into the execution system. The problem you have is that the next day, execution changes. Business never happens the way it's planned. But there isn't a change to the plan. What we've looked at trying to do is allow that planning to sit on top of and be integrated into execution. So that integration between planning and execution allows us to monitor for any changes or deviation within the supply chain. And then replan just that segment of the supply chain and execute a new plan. It continuously allows you to keep the plan and the execution in sync. Well, let's talk about how business intelligence now factors into that process. It's a great question. Our business intelligence allows you to really start to look at three different areas. The first is that ability to monitor the network and understand if there's a change. We'll generate an alert that says we have a problem or a situation that needs to be addressed. The second level of that intelligence starts to analyze what caused that alert and then create a response to it that allows you to make the change. The third area starts to say, let me look at the historical performance and the historical data, mm -hmm. run analysis across it to really start to look at opportunities where you can create process improvements and make changes longer term. You know, a couple of uh, buzzwords that we hear in the industry these days, multi-enterprise, collaborative, and that sort of thing. In the, in the context of what we're talking about here, what would be a multi-enterprise, collaborative, demand-driven network? Traditionally, what you've seen is that people look at supply chains within the four walls of their enterprise. That's far from the truth. Especially today, there's more collaboration between you as, a, as either a shipper or a receiver that's dealing with multiple different people within that supply chain. So you have the customer, you have the consumer, you have the carriers you have the actual supplier. So what we've looked at is that network needs to be able to incorporate all of those people in, in the process of delivering product to the location. So when we talk about a multi-enterprise collaborative platform, we're really looking at a way in which all of those people can share information, be able to articulate what the plans are for, that in, for the execution, share the actual transactions that'll be uh, conducted across the network. Mm. Simple example, a purchase order from a retailer is a sales order to a supplier and often a tender to a carrier. So what we allow them to do is to see what is the demand that's generating that purchase order, what are the policies create, causing the creation of that purchase order, and how does that relate to the other areas within the supply chain. Everybody sees the same information at the same time, so there's a single version of the truth across the network, and they can all plan according to what's going to take place. Well, now, you know, it seems to me the ideal situation is visibility that extends, you know, from shelf to supplier. Uh, but how do you guarantee that? How do you bring that about? 
Well, you work a lot between the supplier and the retailer to be able to gain access to that information. And then once that information is available, you want to have both the retailer and the supplier to be able to see the same things that are taking place at the shelf in the store. And then how does that get translated into the different requirements at each level of the supply chain? More importantly, you also have to have visibility as to what's taking place at each level within that supply chain and expand that not only to the, just the retailer and to the supplier, but the other trading partners that end up having to use that same information. So that visibility now extends from the shelf all the way back through the supplier to their suppliers. And in fact, what we're doing today is extending that further into the Asia marketplace where you can actually track and see how a shipment from Asia is coming into your DC and adjust based on priorities and demand where that needs to be distributed next. You know, demand, planning, replenishment, uh, procurement, logistics, extraordinarily important aspects of the, uh, of the supply chain here. How does one address all those? We've been talking about some of that. And that's through that demand translation piece. You start with point of sale information and you start with the policies that control how that demand gets changed into orders at each level. Well, not only is it a matter of changing orders such that the store looks at it at eaches and then cases that they're going to order, a DC looking at it as cases in demand shipping to the store and then the pallets that they need to order from the supplier, but you also extend it into being able to provide a merchandiser what is my actual sell through in each is in cases based against my plan and what's the effect that's going to have on my promotion or my new product introduction. But then you take it outside of the retailer and the supplier and you look at the logistics piece, you have to now take those pallets that you're going to be ordering and translate, well, what does that mean to me in capacity in a truck? Or what do I need to be able to make sure I've got capacity to receive and store that product? So you start to see where there is not only understanding the demand, but translating that demand into meaningful information at each echelon of the supply chain and for each individual user. You know, you talk about each echelon. Let's talk about multi-echelon. How does that provide value to both suppliers and retailers? Most times planning looks at just one area of the supply chain, just how well am I going to do in a store, just how well I need to do in my DC, and what am I going to order and receive in my DC. When we start to look at multi-echelon, what it starts to allow you to do is see, well, how much safety stock am I going to maintain in a store? How much safety stock will I maintain at a DC? How much safety stock will I ask my supplier to be able to maintain? And the goal is to say, let's look at how you optimize that across each level of the supply chain to collectively bring down that inventory. So not just one person benefits, not just one area benefits, but now you can look at benefit from the shelf all the way back through to production and again to the logistics side. And you collaboratively look at what's the effect across the supply chain or the supply network, not just what's the effect to me. Give us a laundry list, if you will. Itemize the benefits as you see them from utilizing the type of solution that we're talking about. What we've seen has been really rather interesting because it, it improves service levels and decreases capital cost overall. So what we've started to find is we've been able to help retailers increase their on-shelf availability to 99% plus, service levels from the supplier to the DCs 99% plus, at the same time reducing those inventories between 25 and 35% at both the retailer in their DCs and their supply chain as well as in the supplier side. Freeing up assets because if you reduce the inventory you also increase the asset utilization and opening up assets for growth. Final question. Distinguish the solution that you're concerned with from the traditional type of solutions that the viewers might be familiar with. I think if I recap a couple of the points, we can do that. You know, first is that multi-enterprise collaborative network and the ability to really share both data and transactions and business processes across the network, linking everybody together. The second one would be the the integration of the planning and execution in a very collaborative fashion and continuously and incrementally. That becomes critical because I don't want to 
waste time to wait until I can replan the entire supply chain. But I want to be able to react and respond today. And linking that with the business intelligence really gives you the ability to monitor on an exception basis what's taking place within the supply chain and what do I need to do to correct it, both instantaneously as well as over a longer period of time. Mark, I want to thank you for uh, meeting with us today. It's been an interesting look into business intelligence and supply chain challenges in retail and in CPG. Thank you very much. Thank you, Russell. This is Mark Zelenek, One Network, speaking with us today about business intelligence, planning, and execution in the CPG and retail space. Thank you for watching.